Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And one of the things I highly recommend installing in your Docker setup right now is Git T. So let's check it out. Now this gives you the ability to run your own GitHub basically, so you could actually have version control on your own projects. But I mainly use this to upload my code so I have one place to store it all so any of my computers have access to it without having it to be public on GitHub itself. Now Git T is something that you can actually host on your own little tiny Raspberry Pi, uh, Pi hosted or even on a NAS or anything that supports Docker. It doesn't take much resources depending on the code that you're gonna be uploading, but it allows you to have everything all in one place just like GitHub. And you can use Git clone, Git like push and pull. This also gives you the chance to learn all the this also gives you the opportunity to learn CI CD so you can learn about runners, actions, and stuff like that. But mainly, I use it just for codes. Now, the last time I advised a really highly recommended Docker was Snippet Box, which is similar to what I would use it for is just to throw up some code. But now that I could actually modify, edit, and have version control, it's so much better. I don't know why I haven't been hosting this much earlier, but I am here now and it is amazing. Anyway, to jump into it, I am using my Pi Hosted uh, template and it is in there already, so you could just grab it off the template. The easiest way around it is just head over to your portainer, go to app template, and search for Git Tia. So, I don't know why I say Git Tia, it's Git T. And there we have it. There is two options available. I am using just the self-hosted um, SQLite version instead of the MariaDB. Um, each one works. I think MariaDB will be able to be larger scale if you're gonna have more people. But since I'm currently the only person using it, the regular Git T is perfectly fine. In here, you could actually change all your settings. So if you don't like the port that it's on, which is 8124 and the SSH port to be 222, and you could also change where the data is stored. I just left everything as default and you could deploy the container. Now, I already have it deployed, so I'm not gonna redeploy it again, but I am gonna show you. Now, on Gitia's website, this is uh, just their main website. It shows you what you can do, and you can actually use this as a cloud. So if you didn't wanna self-host it, you could use their platform. I prefer to self-host it because this is just my private inventory of my code, so I wouldn't be using this option at all but you, there is that availability. Now, the biggest thing that I like about this is that you can run this, which is the runners or actions. So if you are trying to learn, I'm very bad at it. Like, to be honest, most of the stuff that is done on my Pi Hosted is done by a member on my Discord who coded everything for the actions to take template files and rebuild stuff. Like, I don't know how he does that, but it's really cool. And something that I do want to learn, but I don't want to break my own GitHub. So I'd rather just build it and learn it on my own time on my own server, which is possible through here. I do know like very basic things on how to use this, like build releases or compile files, but for what he does, I have no idea. Anyway, jumping into my GitHub, you could see that it's running the IP address that I got, 8124. And then these are a few projects that I have uploaded a couple of days ago. Well, I'm gonna have more, but for the demonstration of this video, I'm just gonna show you the two that I got. And the first one is called Market Data. It's a program that I developed years and years ago. It's to um, grab market data for a particular area. It's for a company that I work for. So I do have this in here with all the codes and I could just leave it here. And anytime I update it, I could have different commits to show you what I did. And then I also have a lot of random stuff like transcode. What this does is basically transcodes all the videos from FFmpeg MP4 to MOV with the WAV file as the audio container. So this way my um, DaVinci Resolve could read all the files and this would loop through the entire directory. So these are like the random codes that I would make. And what's worse is that sometimes I would make a random code on this machine and you know, down the road I would format it and completely forgot that I had like some codes in here. So using a Git repository to host everything ensures that I won't lose that code again. Now, I could actually use this with VS Code. So if you guys have VS Code or just regular code, um, you can actually clone repository and grab it from, say, here. Uh, I'm gonna go grab this transcode one and pop back into here and then paste that transcode. And then I could clone this and then I can make a directory for it. So I'm just gonna go into my documents over here, select repository, open. Yes, I trust this. And there we have it, our codes right here, which is transcoded. So if I want to modify something here, like say, new text to test, I'm gonna save it. You're gonna see a little thing over here. And then I am gonna go over to one and I'm gonna commit this. 
And every time when you commit something, you do have to put a message in. If you're new to uh, code, you also have to configure your username and email. So I'm gonna do that as well. Go into terminal, new terminal, and then you just have to do um, git global user name. Oops, I forgot. Git config global user dot name is done. Git config dash dash global user email is admin at local. And then now I should be able to commit changes. And then I could add the commit message. So added new text. And then I'm gonna save this. Save. And then now I could sync the changes and okay. It's gonna ask me to enter the username and the password. And there you go. At this point, it would have just committed already. So I could just hit F5 and you can see it was just uploaded now. And if I go into the code itself, you would see the new text text, text test. So there we have it. It's so easy to operate if you have code involved or if you wanted to, you can just manually do it through the terminal. And let's go to downloads, git clone, pop that in there and then it'll pull the thing just like if you were using GitHub, but you are locally sharing this yourself. This way your codes won't be publicly available. All right, another thing about this is if you go over to settings, uh, right over here, and if you go into actions and runners, I don't have anything set up right now, but this is where you would set up your runner so you could run your script and everything, but you do need some sort of runner set up. And if you head over to git t actions, they do have a full um, repository on how to get this set up. So there's like act runners, quick start, how to run the program. If you're running this on Docker, you could just run this command to get a runner working on the Docker and um, how to share it. And then you would just add this action in there. Like one of the things that you need to know is that they have uh, the runner token and you just need to grab, create a new runner, grab the runner token. And from there, you could just create your token over here and add your own runners. And this is what's cool is that you could add multiple runners. So if you're using ARM64 or x86, uh, those are the things you could add and then just have it separate to do certain tasks for your program. So if I needed to compile a program for ARM64 and for x86, I would need to add two runners, both with different architects, and then I should be able to run it each individually on different architects. Again, I don't have this set up yet, which I will be later after I start adding in all my codes, but I find this to be very fun. Anyway, this is something I've been messing around with a lot and I'm going to be using this a lot to upload a lot of the weird codes that I have like setting resolution, transcoding, uh, a few programs I have written and I am working on a little game so I want to upload my repository over to my own private git and basically get more comfortable with using git commit push and all the other stuff. So if you guys are interested in running this, uh, I highly recommend it. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out.